Today we're here with Scout, Trapper, and Sadie. Trapper has been doing some resource guarding, so she actually is guarding any kind of resource that is food oriented. So bones, her dog food bowl, um, sometimes high value things like being up higher on, um, on the furniture or on the bed. But she also started trying to resource guard the dog treats I brought over. I'll just let you pan over here. Um, so I brought over the, our high value turkey trainer treats and um, I used them to actually redirect uh, Sadie um, Trapper and Scout. Scout. Thank you. And Trapper and Scout because Scout had gotten up higher on the back of the couch. The higher a dog is, the more the more authority they have in the house. So they're trying to take on a leadership position. Trapper does not want to disagree with her and she started growling at her. And instead of letting that keep escalating, I decided to redirect them into something that I wanted them to do. So I grabbed my turkey trainers out and I called them over to me and I asked them to sit down. I asked them to sit and then we did a couple of iterations. I backed up and I asked them to sit again. So I changed the dynamic between them so they're both very happy, excited, and doing something I wanted them to do. However, after coming back, I put the tricky trainers back on the on the coffee table over here. So then Sadie won, uh, not Sadie, but Trapper wanted to guard that as a resource. She knew that there's a high value food reward in there and that the dogs could have access to them. So she started guarding that um, from the other dogs. So what we started doing was asking her then to respect the boundaries in the living room. It is disrespectful for a dog to be with that within seven feet of any other person who's eating. Um, so what we wanted to do is starting to establish an invisible boundary of really being about back here around the couch. Um, if you want to stand up, we started disagreeing with them any time that they came over here. So now that, um, so this is, so she's coming back over. So we're going to disagree and march towards her and ask her to leave the area of the um, living room. In, so we've said, I've set a boundary really saying that they can't walk in between this area as long as there's some kind of food. So if the family's sitting on the couch and they're eating um, a snack at the while watching TV or there's any kind of treats out on the table, it's not something the dogs can guard. So you wanna be able to guard both sides of this because they have been testing the boundaries and attempting to try to figure out if they can access this area because this, while they're not doing any resource guarding right now, distance is your friend here. The farther they are from the resource, the more that's when they'll stop guarding it. So right now, the reason why we're doing this is not inherently because we don't want them to fix their family to get attention, but because we don't want them to start guarding the tricky trainers on the table. And that will be the same for when the family sits down with any kind of snack over here or anything like that. So having a good distance between you and your dogs while eating or having any kind of food out will be helpful. And then anytime one of the dogs starts to resource guard is making them move farther and farther away from the resource. So that would be your friend for helping her stop resource guarding.